Welcome. We have sued the Norwegian government, and today was the last day in this historical, historic court case. Uh, shortly after having signed the climate agreement, the Norwegian government decided to hand out new oil drilling licenses for the Arctic, and even opening up new areas for drilling. Um, this doesn't really make sense to any of us. Uh, but we also believe that it breaks the laws of the Norwegian constitution. This is why we took the government to court here in Oslo. If you have any questions to us, please don't hesitate. Put them in the comments and we will try to answer as best we can. With me here now, I have Michelle, uh, our attorney. You've uh, just come back from the last day in court. You've spent quite a lot of time there. <laughs> Yeah, thank um, you for having me. Yeah, how do you feel? Yeah, it's a it's an incredible feeling. Uh, first, thank you to everyone that's taken the time uh, and an interest in these issues. I feel amazing. Uh, I think once the judge told us that the verdict is coming up at the beginning in January, I think my heart was just beating really fast, and I was just very happy and very thankful that that we got through the seven days in court. Um, and I was very happy as well with our Norwegian attorneys who did an excellent job at presenting the evidence and at arguing uh, that the opening up of new areas for drilling in the Arctic is a violation of the Norwegian constitution, uh, particularly Article 112 that grants the right to a healthy environment, uh, also safeguards this right for future generations, and also it contravenes the Paris Agreement. So I, I felt very good today in closing arguments. We had uh, our attorneys present uh, very nice um, compilation of the evidence and the testimony that had been given in the past few days and also uh, restated our, our legal arguments. And, of course, the state also had their uh, chance to present. I will not uh, comment on that, but I just have to say that I feel very happy. Mm -hmm. So what will you take with you from, from all this and, and from these days in the Norwegian courtroom? This is not where you normally operate. No, that's right, that's right. So I, I advise mostly on uh, international law, so international human rights law, environmental law, and law of the sea. Uh, and that was actually my role here. Uh, but I think that I'm taking so many, so many amazing memories from, uh, from this experience here in Oslo. I think that, first of all, uh, one of the most impressive things that I have seen in my entire career as an attorney um, has been when you saw this true celebration of access to the courts and uh, the rule of law, where you had all of the Norwegian people basically coming to the courtroom. There was a line outside the courtroom. There was no place to sit. People in the traditional dresses. It was incredibly inspiring. So I think this is one of the most uh, inspiring memories I will take from this. And of course, this is just the beginning. There's a lot more cases going on around the world, and there's a lot more to do to, to protect the Arctic and to uh, combat climate change through the courts. Yeah, we will hear more about the yeah. other cases in a, in a few minutes. Um, in other, other ways in which this has been different from cases you've been involved in before? Uh, this, this is the biggest case in my career. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is so important. It is a, a time, uh, a critical point. I think that uh, our lawyer put it very uh, succinctly today in court when he said we are at a crossroads. So right now, like you said, Norway signed the Paris Agreement, and then it opened up new areas for drilling in the Arctic. So we are at a crossroads. And I think that I had been working before in uh, international criminal law and asylum law, and these are all very important issues. But this particular issue affects people all over the world, and not just us, but also future generations. So I think it was uh, a critical moment, and I think that we did the right thing. Uh, Nature and Youth, Greenpeace, and the, the Grandparents Climate Campaign, the plaintiffs, I think they took the right decision, and we've done uh, everything we can um, to, to move these issues forward. So how could this climate case inspire others, you think? Well, I think it's, it's kind of like... We may inspire others, but others inspire us as well. So we had this, um, I think it was something like 300 people from 25 different countries um, filmed 210 videos that were compiled into one the witness statement, the people's witness statement. And if you see that, I think it's also on, on the website, and, and it was also submitted to court uh, as evidence of, of the global opposition against Arctic oil uh, and of 
uh, the global movement, I think, to hold our governments and corporations accountable. So that was very inspiring to us. So I don't know who inspired whom, but I think it's just a, a global wave of, of uh, people taking a stand and saying, hey, governments, corporations, you are infringing on our rights. If we have to go to court, we will. And we, we will see what happens in January when the judgment comes up. Yeah, that's the continuation. What, uh, how will we take it forward, do you think? Or what sure, so um, again, now? today was the last day of trial. Uh, there is nothing to do now but um, continue working on the other cases that we have and the other projects. Uh, it's all in the hands of the judge. We have given all the evidence and, and placed all our arguments and written submissions. And he said that he will let us know uh, before Christmas what, around what date the judgment will come up. And he was thinking the beginning of January. So we will uh, definitely keep everybody posted yes. on uh, what happens and what the verdict will be after this. So I think it, it would be good if, if people stay tuned because it's, it's just a few weeks. Next thing you know, it's uh, the holidays and, and next thing you know, we have a judgment. So. so what are your hopes for the future? Or, um, <laughs> it's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very big question. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I think we talked about this yesterday, but if I have a, a couple of minutes to revisit, uh, one of the highlights that I had here in, in Oslo was that we had a um, very big eye sculpture uh, in front of the courthouse with uh, Article 112, uh, the article of the Constitution that, you know, safeguards the right to a safe, uh, healthy environment also for future generations. And I actually saw a very normal family walking around, the children run up to the, to the ice sculpture, and they're kind of, I don't speak Norwegian, but body language is universal, and they were very excited. And then I saw the parents of these children reading out the article, 112. And if you ask me what my hopes for the future are, is that this is more than just an ice sculpture. This is more than just words on a paper in the Constitution. This is an actual right that is enforceable in the courts that will limit government action, such as opening up new areas for drilling in the Arctic. So that is my hope. It only struck me today, actually, that paragraph 112, that's... 112 is also the emergency call number here in Norway. That's right. It's in, a, in a lot of countries in Europe, it is the emergency number, which is, it actually fits very well because it is a global crisis and it is an emergency. Yes. So if we take another maybe even bigger question, um, <laughs> how do you think that we, the people living today or maybe future generations, will look back upon this time in history? You know, I, I don't have children, but I do have a niece. Her name is Blythe, and she's 14 months. And I want her to look at this moment and think that her aunt that loves her and think that, you know, also, like, her parents and her, her uh, family has done everything that they, had, they could do to prevent the catastrophic route that we have taken, the, the route that our governments and corporations have taken us on. Uh, as you know, science shows us that if we do nothing, this world is going to warm up two degrees, three degrees, four degrees. Already now we see the, the effects of climate change, and they're quite, quite horrible, uh, and it's just going to get worse. So I want my niece to look back. I want the next generation to look back and see that many of us took a stand, many of us organized, many of us took the time and the, and the interest in these issues to make the world at the very least, livable, if not uh, a, a good place for them. Yes. Thank you so much, Michelle, for being with us, and thank you for all the hard work you've put into this during <laughs> these last few weeks yeah. and the months. And thanks, everyone, for taking an interest. Uh, again, if you just joined, we're coming to you live from Oslo, where we have had the last day of the court case against uh, the Norwegian government and uh, oil drilling in the Arctic. Uh, this is not the only legal case going on in the world. Um, there's a, wi a wave of climate action uh, going on in the world. Um, we'll, be, we'll now be hearing from Faiza uh, from the UN Climate Conference, and she has a story on other climate court cases. 
The case in Norway is not the only climate case that's happening. In fact, there are a lot of other cases happening around the world. And right now, we brought people from all corners around the world that are at the forefront of climate-impacted places and that they are taking their governments and corporations to court. Hi, Karen. You're from the U.S. Yes. And you are suing the U.S. government together with others. Can you say something about that? Yes. So I am part of the Juliana versus USA case where we are suing the U.S. government for the actions they have taken over the last 50-some years to contribute to climate change and claiming that the damages that they have done through those actions are violating our constitutional rights. Four years ago, um, I was uh, in Tacloban City when Super Typhoon Haiyan hit and somebody has to be held accountable and we decided to, to band together and hold the big uh, corporations, the carbon majors, accountable to this. It has been incredibly inspiring meeting all these people from all the corners of the world who are taking action and suing their governments and corporations. We've been sharing experiences, we've been sharing stories with each other, and you can definitely see and feel a global movement that's rising that is going to help out the case in Norway, but it's also going to help out all the other cases that are happening right now and that are yet to happen. Thank you, Faiza. Uh, I've now been joined by uh, Truls, head of uh, Greenpeace in Norway. Um, we've gotten more than half a million people signing up as, uh, well, in evidence against oil drilling in the Arctic from people all around the world. Thank you so much. Um, what is your thinking around this massive support? No, I'm, I'm really, really happy to see the massive support we've got from all over the world about taking Norway to court on continued drilling for oil in the Arctic, which just underlines that the need to keep it in the ground to make Norway stop looking for more oil and gas than the world can afford to burn is not only a Norwegian issue, it's an issue for all of us in the world that, that wants to stop climate change and protect the Arctic. So uh, this massive support from all over the world makes, makes it possible to go to court on these important issues with a big power, although we are up against Norway's by far biggest industry. Why, I mean, why did Greenpeace take this on? I mean, taking on the Norwegian government. We didn't do it alone, though. It was also together with Nature and Youth and the Grandparents' Climate Campaign. Well, the backdrop for this lo climate lawsuit is, as you know, that the world has found much more fossil fuels than we can ever afford to burn without destroying the global climate. And, and sort of... From my history in Greenpeace and as an environmental activist, we've been trying to tell that story and make politicians understand that we should not spend our resources looking for more fossil fuels. We need to phase out fossil fuels, phase in renewables, stop looking for more. It's been for 20 years we tried to make that point and we have been fighting new licensing rounds in Norway over and over again with the same arguments. We've been fighting coal mines and Arctic drilling in other countries in the world. And politicians and companies don't get the message. So then, what can we do? We, we need to go, perhaps, try some new arenas. And uh, we are now in a situation with very solid climate science that really proves that there is no space in the atmosphere for more carbon. No need to look for more. We have a clear international agreement that the acceptable risks of climate change is to stay well below two degrees. That's the goal of the Paris Agreement. We could imagine from such a clear goal that politicians would also agree on strategies and policies to reach the goal. Unfortunately, it's a huge gap between the ambition, which is good, and the efforts, the ideas to reduce emissions that we so far have. That gap needs to be closed. 
And the worst way to close that gap is to continue to dig and search for more fossil fuels. And we said, well, what can we do? We can go to courts. And I think that will happen here in Norway. It has already happened. I'm really proud. And I think we'll see that happening many other places. Yeah, it was quite shocking. I mean, it didn't make sense at all to me uh, that uh, the Norwegian government uh, um, allows drilling in new areas in the Arctic. It was the first time in 20 years this happened. So shortly after having signed the climate agreement, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. And I think this court case, which is a super interesting kind of when evidence has to be presented in the court of law, it, 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 it is done in a different way than in normal political ping-pong debate. So we had much more time to lay out the evidence and think more sort of based on principles rather than just short-term political points, which I think has been good for the case, good for the issue. And it just shows more and more that this oil industrial complex has its own drive towards more, 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 without considering the environmental limits that actually should have some impacts on the growth of this industry. I also see we're getting a lot of comments uh, right now in support of uh, this uh, case. So thank you, thank you very much. And thank you all the more than half a million people who've signed in evidence in this uh, case as well. Um, if, if we look at the, the big global picture, what does this case mean and, and why is it important, do you think? Well, this case is, is important globally, of course, because some countries need to stop looking for more. And so far, we have seen almost no countries take the consequences of the need to keep it in the ground. It's a broad activist movement that has understood it. Lots of scientists have understood it, but very few countries. So, if we can get Norway to keep it in the ground, other countries can do it as well. We need to open that frontier. And of course, emissions from here, our oil and gas in the Arctic, will have impacts elsewhere. We are responsible for the catastrophic effects of climate change other places. The state argued in the court that, well, you know, our responsibility as an oil nation is just so small. But of course, everybody's individual responsibility is small, and as a super small nation on the planet, we are responsible through the exported fossil fuels between one and two percent of the global emissions. And that's a huge responsibility for a small nation. And we need to take responsibility for that, at least stop digging for more. If we then take it back to the, the slightly smaller uh, picture, you know, you're not only a, a fighter for the climate, you're also, uh, you also have friends and, and family. Um, what have their reactions been to you taking on the Norwegian government? It's quite a big thing to do. <laughs> well, kind of they, they, they are used to me trying to kind of fight big fights and, 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 and sometimes quite often also, also win them. With, with, with sort of the support and, and, and resources of Greenpeace, it's possible to win huge fights, whether it's illegal fishing or it's the need for marine reserves or if it's uh, getting oil companies out of the tar sands or getting coal and maybe now also oil out of the oil fund. We need to have big ambitions when we, when we fight for the planet and we are often winning. But when we started to talk sort of home and with my, my parents and brothers about sort of can we sue Norway for oil drilling? They were laughing like crazy. It was kind of well, you know, <laughs> you can try whatever you want, but it will never work. Interesting stunt. But uh, as the case has proceeded over the last two years, they have been super interested and uh, super uh, engaged. And, uh, and it was really heartwarming to see my parents in court among the hundreds of other listeners every single day because they were so proud and they understood that it was so necessary to take these steps. And I haven't, even, even among my friends in the oil industry, I haven't heard any uh, critical point about what we have been doing and, and how we, with our fantastic lawyers, have been able to pull this 
court case through now for, for seven days in a row, only putting important arguments in. So family has been super interesting, but, uh, but uh, I think they're really proud, as I am. Uh, I am as well. Um, Good. So how do you think we will look back upon this time in, in history in the future? Well, regarding the court case itself, I've, I'm quite convinced we'll look at it as a turning point for how environmentalism and uh, climate campaigning yeah, is being done, at least in Norway, and uh, most likely in quite many other places. In the even bigger picture, I think we'll look back to this period as uh, really, really embarrassing period because we know that we are in a critical period for the, our possibilities to save the planet. It's about climate change and all those impacts and lots of other things. We are seeing biodiversity losses completely escalating. We're into sort of the man-made epoch of, of, of the Earth's geological history, the Anthropocene. And we, are, we know it, and we're almost not doing anything. It's kind of lots of people are looking forward to Black Friday because it will be cheap to buy stuff that we don't need. And I think kind of, I hope that we will not look back and think that kind of, well, we really didn't act. So on the positive side, I hope we can look back at this, a court case, a movement that really managed to turn the tide but that requires more than a week in court. Yeah. I, uh, if, there, if, the, um, if uh, the viewers have any questions, please type them in. Um, otherwise, um, do you have any more like, hopes for, for now and for the future, for, for yourself and, and for the climate work? No, well, for this case, I'm looking forward to <coughs> to uh, January. The judge suggested a verdict in the climate case in January. Uh, um, we should win. Yeah. We have been presenting by far the best arguments. It's a critical issue. We have a very clear text of the constitution. It's absolutely sort of guaranteed that if, if common sense should prevail, we win this case. At the same time, it's the first time this paragraph has been ever tested in court. We are breaking historic ground on so many levels in this yeah. case, at least here in Norway. Uh, and we're up against our by far most powerful industry, which is why we need to go to court in order to beat them. So there are no guarantees, but we have given them such a beautiful fight. We certainly have, and uh, thank you so much, Truls. Thank you for being here, and thank you for all the hard work you're, you have put in, into this uh, court case. Thank you so much for the support and ability. This was the last day of this uh, historic court case against the Norwegian government over oil drilling in the Arctic. Regardless of what the verdict will be, the time for letting the oil industry and governments toy with our future is over. It's time to hold our politicians responsible, so let's make sure we're well organized. Thank you for watching. Bye.